and this is Twice As Good. Today, we're visiting one of the most exciting and exotic places on the planet, New Zealand. Happy and I are absolutely thrilled to be in such a spectacular location. New Zealand is an island country in the southwestern Pacific Ocean in the Southern Hemisphere. Not only is the scenery awe-inspiring, the wildlife and native customs are absolutely fascinating. Because it's so far removed from the rest of the world, the flora, which means the plants, and fauna, which means the animals, in New Zealand are truly unique. And that's what makes it one of the most sought after destinations in the world. We're thrilled and honored to have been invited to cook today at the Eagle's Nest. Eagle's Nest is located in Russell, New Zealand, north of Auckland. We'll be cooking today with Chef Michael, executive chef of Eagle's Nest, to learn more about New Zealand's amazing indigenous ingredients and dishes. And we'll have the chance to sample some of Chef Michael's signature recipes. But first, let's learn a little bit about this amazing place. Because of its remoteness, New Zealand was one of the last lands to be settled by humans. New Zealand is actually made up of two main islands, the North Island and the South Island, as well as numerous smaller islands, and is located about 900 miles east of Australia, across the Tasman Sea. Polynesians first settled New Zealand and developed a distinctive Maori culture. In 1642, the first European to discover New Zealand was a Dutchman named Abel Tasman, for whom the Tasman Sea was named. The next to arrive was the British explorer, James Cook, who mapped most of the New Zealand coastline in 1769. As with Australia, the European settlers brought new ingredients and livestock that became integral to what we now think about as New Zealand's culinary traditions. Sheep and potatoes are two imports that have had a huge impact on the cooking and the culture here. And so has the kiwi fruit, originally from China which was brought here by the British at the beginning of the 20th century. Now, in most places, when people say kiwi, they mean the fruit. But here, there's also a bird known as the kiwi. And kiwi is the nickname that many New Zealanders go by too. We're excited to start cooking with Chef Michael, and in between our recipes today, we'll be introducing you to a few of the amazing aspects of New Zealand's unique culture and traditions. So let's get cooking, kiwi style. We're honored to be here with Chef Michael, executive chef of Eagle's Nest, to learn how to prepare some wonderful and signature New Zealand dishes. Welcome girls, welcome to Russell in New Zealand and Eagle's Nest in particular. Today I'm gonna to take you through a few dishes and we're gonna start off with a tea kamata which is a New Zealand raw fish, or marinated fish dish. We're going to start off with chopping a little bit of terakihi, which is a, a white-fleshed fish. It's a very traditional Polynesian dish. It comes, uh, the heritage of it comes from the Maori when they first came to New Zealand with the canoes. So if we just put it in there. OK, so we'll just cut lemon in half. And if you'd just like to squeeze it through your hand so we don't get any of the pips. These are so fresh. Fresh out of the garden. We've got a quite a big um, garden here at Eagle's Nest. Is that a lime or a lemon? That's a lime, Tahitian lime. It smells really good. So if you just like to give that a bit of a stir up, and we'll just put that aside for the moment while we get on with making the rest of the sauce for it. Okay. We've got some shallots, some coconut cream, a little bit of chilli, and this is fish sauce, and this is a little bit of honey, New Zealand manuka honey. So if you'd just like to add all the ingredients into the bowl, that's the New Zealand manuka honey, and around the property here we have a lot of um, the manuka, the tea trees, and the bees love the flowers. In New Zealand, the manuka tree is highly prized for many reasons. Also known as the tea tree, the manuka is a common shrub found in New Zealand's drier areas. It's closely related to the Australian tea tree plant. Both the New Zealand and Australian varieties are called tea trees, because early pioneers used them to make tea. Manuka honey comes from the manuka tree. It boasts a strong, distinctive flavor and is a favorite in New Zealand cooking. Manuka honey is what's known as a monofloral honey, 
That means that the bees rely on only a single flower for its production. Manuka honey is also used on the skin to treat wounds and burns and is a go-to remedy for sore throats. New Zealanders highly value the manuka tree. Even manuka sawdust is used to smoke fish and meats. Kathy, do you want to add the salt? Sure. Two pinches, probably. That'll be good. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's add some fish sauce. Yep, and that's for the saltiness. So if you'd like to add about a pinch of the uh, dried chilli flakes, you can also use um, fresh chilies. You can add more chilies if you want it to be a bit hot. And all the nicely fine diced shallots. If you'd like to add the coconut cream, it comes from the, the fruit of the coconut. Coconut milk is made by simmering shredded coconut with water or milk until frothy and then straining the mixture through a cheesecloth. Coconut cream is the thick, non-liquid paste-like portion that rises to the top of coconut milk after refrigeration. Coconut cream is used as an ingredient in cooking, having a mild, non-sweet taste. And we'll add a pinch of the cilantro as well, please. Now we've, we've left the fish to marinate, and as you can see, if you have a look at this, it's changed colour. It's gone from that really nice bright white to a quite of an opaque colour. Though not cooked in the traditional sense with heat, the citric acid in the lemon and lime juice have created a chemical process that rearranges or denatures the fish's proteins, much like the application of heat. In the case of our dish here, and in most ceviches, lime juice, which has a pH of about two, denatures the proteins in the fish, freeing the long chains of amino acids from their native form allowing them to rearrange in a formation that is similar to traditionally cooked seafood. Because of the delicate nature of fish though, this process can occur quite rapidly. Leave it too long and your ceviche will become tough and rubbery. Should we add this to this bowl? Uh, yep, add it all to the bowl and put the, put the juice in as well. Now, would you like to just zest a little bit of the lemon as well? Yep. I'm just gonna just quickly cut some lettuce. This is cos lettuce. It's great if you're having a Caesar salad. So we'll just put a little bit of this cos lettuce in the bottom. Some of our marinated fish. And we're just gonna use a bit of the sauce that's left over because that's where a lot of the flavour is. And just round the plate. That's so pretty. And just a little bit more of the zest that you were doing just before. And there you go, there's our finished dish. Based on a combination of oral history, archaeology, and scientific analyses, most historians believe the Maori arrived in New Zealand sometime in the 13th century AD. The Maori are known for their unique music, native dances, and carvings. Why is the tongue sticking out? the tongue protruding from uh, the mouths of our carvings, this is a sign of uh, intimidation. And uh, this took place especially when we went to war or battle against uh, another force. Before we went into battle, we performed the haka, which is the uh, war dance. It was supposed to intimidate them, hopefully into scaring them away so that they'd flee and no fight would take place or no battle would take place. <laughs> As New Zealand is above the ground, what's going on underneath the surface is also an amazing story. That's because New Zealand straddles an active fault line between a pair of enormous subterranean plates in the earth that are constantly in motion. In the South Island, millions of years ago, the upward momentum was responsible for creating the mountain range known as the Southern Alps. In the center of the North Island, one plate continues to move underneath the other, which in turn generates massive amounts of active subterranean heat and volcanic activity, resulting in boiling mud pools, steaming lakes, and huge geysers that erupt on a regular basis. What are we gonna make next? Now we're gonna make some lamb rack, and we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna put some beet puree and some goat's cheese, a bit of pine nuts, 
just a little bit to spice it up a little bit. So we need to start with cooking our um, beetroot. So we'll pop our beetroot straight in some hot water. While we're cooking our beetroot, we'll start getting our lamb racks prepared to go on the barbecue. And we're using a barbecue today. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna season it up. So we, you girls like to put a little bit of salt and pepper, just pinch it each over, just spread them over. That's great. There we go, just salt the top. Yep, just salt the top. And then we'll just pour a little bit of olive oil over the top of it, doesn't need a lot. And then don't be scared to just get in, spread it round, give it a little bit of a massage. There we go. Okay. Now this barbecue's, it's running at about 220 degrees Celsius. So it's quite hot. So if you're doing it in, that, in an oven at home, you can easily do it. So we're just gonna pop these straight on the barbecue and you can really hear them sizzle as they go on. That's what you want, because you don't want them sticking to the metal. So we'll leave those on there for about two minutes on, on that side. These are French lamb chops, right? That's right. That means that you can see the bones. Exactly. As you can see, these have got a lovely bit of colour on them now. So I'm just going to turn them over, put them on top, and then we're just going to close the lid. So while they're cooking, we're going to get on with making our beet puree. Now our beetroots have been cooking in here for probably about 45 to 50 minutes. You just want them nice and soft. And as you can see, they're really tender. The stew is like kind of red. It's the juice out of the beetroots that's made it red. We're going to use a little bit of that shortly to when we um, puree the beetroot. So if you'd like to add maybe a, a good pinch of um, salt, all of the beetroot juice into there. That's it. Careful not to get anything on you because it will stain. All of the white wine vinegar and also the butter. About 20 grams of butter going in there. And then with our stick blender, we're just going to I'll just finish that off a little bit for you. Okay, so now we've made our beet puree, we're just going to put it into our ramekin. So we're just about ready to start plating up. This isn't a lovely colour. Have you girls ever done a, a smear before? No, we haven't. Do you want to have a try? Sure. I'll show you what we're going to do. Now this is called an offset palette knife. Here's another plate. Okay. Is that good? Yeah, that's great. So what we're going to do, try and do here is keep everything in that red beetroot. So with our pine nuts, these are just at either end, and they're just lightly toasted. This is goat's feta, so it's a goat's cheese, quite a hard cheese. And this is our broccolini that we've just lightly blanched in some hot water. Broccolini is a vegetable that is a hybrid of broccoli and kale with small florets and slender stalks. That's right, and we sometimes call it long stem broccoli as well. Now our lamb racks are finished cooking, so we're just going to go down between the, the bones. That looks so good. Doesn't it? Oh, look at that, perfect. As we mentioned, New Zealand is home to some very unique birds. The kiwi bird is a flightless bird that comes from the ratite family, which also includes the ostrich and the emu. New Zealand is also home to a flightless parrot known as the kakapo, and the world's only alpine parrot known as the kia. Kias are known for their intelligence. We have traveled to Rainbow Springs Nature Park in Rotorua, New Zealand to learn more. Well, this here, this is a kia. So the kia, there's only around 1,000 to 5,000 of those left in the wild here in New Zealand, and they're only found on the South Island. And they're probably the smartest bird in the world. They can learn like a five-year-old child can learn, and they're just as smart as the chimpanzees. This is a girl. Her name is Jenny, and she hatched in 1991. So she's around 24 years old, and they can live up to around 50 to 60 years. This time around we're going to cook ourselves a fish dish and we're going to use some hapoka. Hapoka is unique to New Zealand, it's a deep water fish and it's very similar in texture and flavour to uh, groper or bass, sea bass. And we're going to use some green lip mussels. Have you ever seen green lip mussels before? 
No. Again, they're a New Zealand um, species. So we'll start off with just seasoning our fish. Now we're going to use some avocado oil this time. Avocado oil is great because it's got a much higher burning point. So when we put it on the barbecue, you're not going to get that big flavour of burnt oil. The smoke point of a given oil or fat is the temperature up to which it can be used without emitting visible smoke. The smoke point of an oil tends to increase as an oil's free fatty acid content decreases. Avocado oil has one of the highest smoke points. So again, we just massage it in a little bit. So we're just going to put some of these mussels in the pot. And then we're going to add some white wine. A little bit of garlic. Mmm, that smells so good. Doesn't yes, it? It does. And we're just going to put the lid on those. Let them steam for a couple of minutes. It won't take them long at all to cook. Now we need to get the um, our hapoka on and cooking. It should be nice and hot. So we're just going to put those on there. Oh, lovely sizzle. Now we're just going to cut these potatoes in half. Now these have just been pre-cooked and they're nice and soft. We're just going to add some of our shallots. We use green onions in a lot of recipes like salads, right? Yeah, and what, that's what we're really doing. We're making a little miniature salad to go underneath our, uh, our fish. If you'd just like to put maybe about half of that uh, bacon in there as well. And again, we're just going to use a bit of our avocado oil. Little drizzle in there. A bit of a mix-up. That looks good. A little bit of parsley, a little bit of seasoning, a bit of pepper. Now you notice that the, the pepper okay. probably looks a little bit different. We're yeah. using what we call a New York cut, which is a mixture of white and um, dark pepper. Our mussels have opened up nicely, so I'm just going to add a bit of cream to that, so it's nice and thick. And we're just going to add in some butter cubes. Now this is what they call montaing the butter into the sauce. And again, that'll just thicken it up. We're going to add a couple of squeezes of lemon juice. What we're going to do is just put a bit of our, our potatoes. Mm, that looks good. They've all marinated in our Exactly, yep. And all oil. the flavours have combined with our bacon and fish. You don't want to cook too much. It's a, it's a delicate flavour. Wow, that sauce looks good too. These are big mussels. We've only cooked with little mussels before. They're huge mussels, aren't they? These ones, we um, actually went out on the rocks yesterday afternoon and, and got them for us. That one hasn't quite opened up as no. much as the other. As you can see, mussels, when they're cooked, they start to, they do this and they open, but sometimes they don't open all the way. So we just give it a little bit of a help. We'll just pour a little bit of that. So that's made our sauce, our broth, and that's our dish. So it's a little little one, that one. How old are these guys? These lambs are about 10 days old. What's the importance of lambs in New Zealand? Lambs in New Zealand, they're basically yeah. going to grow up and replace these sheep here, OK? So they can keep the numbers of sheep going. We've got about 35 million sheep in New Zealand, and it's a very big export earner for our country. New Zealand has some amazing animals. It has a wealth of reptiles, invertebrates, and marine wildlife ranging from seals, to beautiful living coral. But one of the animals most commonly associated with New Zealand is the sheep. Now, sheep aren't native here. As with Australia, sheep were first imported to the country by European settlers, but they have become central to the country's culinary traditions and economy. And where you find sheep in New Zealand, you often find a New Zealand heading dog, which uses its visual prowess and quick movements to control herds of sheep. What kind of dog is Queen? Queen is what we call a strong-eyed heading dog. She has a very strong eye, she eyes the sheep up, and she heads them off, gets around them. She can round up a mob of about four or 500 sheep on her own, this dog. Wow. She uses intimidation. She walks up closer to the sheep, the sheep go away. She goes closer, the sheep go away. She gets around them, they come back to me, the sheep. Sit. Get them behind. Left, left, left. 
Wool is one of New Zealand's biggest exports. Today, we're going to watch a sheep be shorn. Go nice and slowly for you. Look at that. Down that touch we go. Bit of a haircut, look at that. There we go, girls. One shorn sheep. How do you feel how smooth he is? It's kind of warm, isn't he? Look at that. Now it's time for dessert. Pavlova is a meringue-based dessert named after the Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova. The dessert is believed to have been created during or after one of her tours to New Zealand and Australia in the 1920s. So we just have to start splitting. All we want is the just the egg whites. You want to have a try at that? Great. Now we're just going to whip this. So you notice I'm doing a figure eight. It's the quickest way to um, to whip egg whites or cream or and something like that. It turns into a meringue, right? It does. So I've got one here that I've already started. That I'll get you girls to um, just finish off if you like. So if you want to start whipping that, and we're just going to pour about a cup of sugar in here. Okay, and this is just a little bit of white vinegar. I don't know if you've noticed, but the egg whites have got a nice and glossy and got a lovely shine to them. It's getting really thick. And this is just a bit of vanilla essence. Give it a bit of flavour. And about a teaspoon of corn flour. Yeah, it just stabilises the, the eggs. So we're just trying to whip these egg whites to just a nice soft peak. And you see we're just starting to get that now. And I've got a couple of moulds here. And then we'll just put them in the oven. Can you also whip them up with the mixer? Yes, you certainly can. Um, I prefer to do it by hand, but um, if you're at home, no, just throw them in your uh, kitchen whiz and they'll come out beautiful. It's a lot easier on the wrist too. And if you just like pass me that plate. There you go. I'll go and pop these in the oven. Okay, we've got our pavlovas out of the oven. Are you ready to uh, make these look pretty? Yeah, yes, we're ready. Great. And we'll just move these onto the plates. There you go. Thank you. Now what we've got here is um, kiwi fruit and some strawberries, a passion fruit, and this is a black doris plum gel. So just make them look pretty. Okay. Maybe put some cream on to start with. Good dollop of cream on. And a little bit of everything. Just add some fruits. A bit of flour. Fantastic. I think we're done. Great. And what do you think of that? Do you want to have a try? Sure. Sure. Mmm, this is the perfect New Zealand dessert. Wow, we can almost stay here forever. There's just so much to see, so much to do, and so much to eat here in New Zealand. That's totally fabulous. We just know we'll have to come back someday. And we have to give a huge thank you to Chef Michael and everyone at Eagle's Nest for giving us such a remarkable taste of New Zealand cuisine and customs. We're certainly going to cherish this trip. And when we get home, we'll try to put our own spin on some of the amazing recipes we sampled here. Because when you take something that you've learned from a new and wonderful place and combine it with your own locally sourced ingredients and flavors, the result isn't simply good, it's twice as good! information about the dishes prepared on today's show, including a listing of ingredients in the recipes, please visit us at twiceasgoodshow.com.
Twice as Good with Hadley and Delaney is brought to you by Mila. Emma Besser, forever better. Mila. And by Cuties. Cute, you can eat. Cuties. Kitchen Works. Wherever we go, that's where the party's at. Kitchen Works. <laughs>